Hello, welcome back to another video. Today, as promised, I have a different hat to wear. It's my Easy Disc hat. So I'm now very honoured to be an Easy Disc supported athlete. And Clint over at Easy Disc has sent me through this version 3, which is for wheels that are 65mm rim depth or more, which is ideal given that we're going to be fitting it today to this Zip 808 wheel, which I currently use for racing on and I haven't ever really been able to justify the cost of a, a full disc wheel because it's at least a grand. So that's where uh, Easy Disc come into the picture and I'm very excited. Let's get on with putting this on the wheel. Apparently it's a straightforward process, it shouldn't take too long, it doesn't need too many tools, I've got those out here. And uh, yeah, let's get stuck in. Right, so in the box that came today, which is very exciting, I have the Easy Disc cover itself. So this is recyclable plastic and very stiff, strong and sturdy. We also have this here, which is the wheel protection. So this stops the cover from rubbing against the rim. And then we also have these very fancy to go with my black and yellow bike, yellow swirls. So these go onto the, the Easy Disc covers. You can also get custom ones of these, so if you want your own logos on or anything, they can sort that out for you. And uh, yeah, it just jazzes it up a bit, really. So I've got to put those on too. And then finally, we have a bag here, which I believe has the zip ties and the disc bolts. So these are all that you need to put the disc cover on the, the wheel that you've got. A few tools as well, probably useful to go through those. We have cable cutters or snips you could use scissors as well it's just for cutting the zip ties a chain whip a lock ring tool and then we also have a lint free cloth and some uh, some intensive tar remover but basically anything that you've got which is going to take any dirt off of the surface of the wheel before you put these stickers on because you don't really want them coming off okay so first things first i think if you've got some of these, you're lucky enough to have yourself some custom decals. We're going to get the uh, the cover out and get the decals on. So there's also a uh, there's an Easy Disc logo that's laser engraved onto the uh, onto the disc here, and one side's matte, one side shiny. So the matte side faces outwards. Let's get these decals on. I'm well happy with these. This is going to look good with my bike, isn't it? Yeah. So these decals, they use the same technology that if you see cars where they're like chromed or looking pretty cool with a wrap on it, this is the same, same stuff basically. So it's not going to go anywhere anytime soon. So that is one of the decals on. I'm pretty happy with that. I know I've seen a few other people do them where you kind of have like bits and bobs all over, so you could do it however you want really, but when the wheel spins up to speed, that is hopefully gonna look like a continuous yellow line. One half done, other half, a bit boring, so we'll just magic that on now. And there we go, easy as that. So, two halves completed. Next step now is taking the cassette off my wheel and then attaching the covers. Okay, so the wheels are ready to go now, cassette off, and uh, we need to just get this cleaned up and stick it up so that when we put the easy disc on, it's not gonna scratch it and the uh, stickers aren't gonna come loose. So this is where the uh, tar remover, or if you have, I think, isopropyl alcohol is the normal thing to use. If you've got something like that that you can use for this, comes in handy, just gets any residue off of the wheel before you put the stickers down, because otherwise they won't stick very well. And then next step, we have is applying these protective stickers onto the rim. Okay, so we've got the protection on now. There's one bit left over just in case you uh, make a mess. And also, I assume these are nipple protectors for during the run. Okay, so now that we have the protection in place, the next step is putting the disc cover 
onto the wheel. So there's a few things to make sure of here. So the first thing you have to make sure of when you put this on is that the hole here, that that lines up with the valve. There it is. <laughs> so you need that obviously lined up. Okay, so once you've lined, lined the valve up, you've got the disc in the placement where you want it centrally. You then hold it in place using a little bit of just electrical tape so that while you're doing the next step, it doesn't go anywhere. Okay, so we've got the disc cover held down now, so it shouldn't go anywhere. And we're gonna start off putting the cable ties in. Now it's important that you get the, the bigger end of the cable tie that sits on the inside of the disc wheel. So we turn it around. Yeah, turn it around and then, so what we're looking to do is put the zip tie through one of these holes, round a spoke, poke it back through. On the other side of the spoke. And then put that in place. Now we're only gonna tighten these down loosely to begin with just to make sure we have got them in the right areas. So yeah, we're looking to get about four of these in on the absolute minimum, but ideally you probably want more like five or six or even more if you can. There's plenty of holes, so anything you can to get it more secure is perfect. Okay, so we've got all the cable ties in place now. Managed to get six of them in, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six, yep. So it's nice and secure. What you wanna do now before you cut the end off the cable ties and before you secure it in place, just check that you're happy with where it's placed so that it's nice and central and that it's, uh, yeah, exactly where you want it to be because that's important. So when you're happy with where the wheel is, uh, the disc cover, tighten them up properly and then cut the ends off. But when you cut the ends off, make sure you give yourself, don't cut it all the way to the base. Leave about 10 mil on there. It's not gonna be rattling around, so. There's really no need to cut it down all the way to the base. Final thing to do is grab the other half, here's one I made earlier, and put that into place. And then once you've got that in place roughly, so what we're looking to do is line up the holes with the other side of the disc cover. You've then got these binding screws and you feed one half through this side and join it up with the other half on the other side. Okay. There we go. So that's all of the uh, binding screws in place. And the easy disc is installed. That's pretty straightforward. I'm really liking the look of these yellow decals. Easy disc in place, pretty straightforward. Cut out there for the, uh, the valve. I need to get a longer valve because mine's not quite long enough. I definitely didn't notice when the hat went missing, so that's good. The last thing to do now is just pop the cassette back on, complete the look. And there we go, one easy disc in place with cassette. I'm really happy with that. And um, compared to spending upwards of a grand on a normal disc wheel, I think that is the, uh, the obvious solution. If it yields the same benefits, which it has been wind tunnel tested, I'll show you the uh, results in a link in the description, is within normal sort of testing times for a disc wheel. And if you don't know much about disc wheels, then unless you're on a ridiculously hilly course, it's pretty much always faster to have one. Thoroughly recommended, I'm really looking forward to getting out with this, trying it out. I'm not sure how soon that's gonna be because it's about three degrees outside currently. So my time trial bike is on the trainer and we'll be there probably for the next few months. These, however, do have a lifetime guarantee. So any breakages, anything goes wrong, they will sort it out for you. It's pretty straightforward. They do do international shipping. So I know there's a few viewers that aren't in the UK they can ship it out for you, no problem at all. So they do offer easy disc, easy disc from 20 mil up to 100 plus rim depth on the wheels. So regardless of what rear wheel you're running, that's a bit of a tongue twister, you can have one of these and it will be faster. Don't believe anything about them being hard to handle in a, a crosswind. The rear wheel makes very little difference. You've got all your weight over it. The front wheel, however, if you're running an 80 mil depth front wheel, you are gonna know about that in the crosswinds. Thoroughly recommend it, it's 149 pounds. For any of you guys watching this, I've also managed to get a discount code for you to use too. That code is... Let me know how you get on if any of you guys are thinking about buying it. 
I'll have a thorough review of this in the summer. They've done aero testing themselves, but I'm quite keen to get on Mallory Park with Chris, my coach, and give this a test with the new uh, live aero system he's got there, which is very exciting. Hope you've enjoyed that video. A little bit different today. Next week, might have a bit more mountain biking content. I think we're off to Canuck Chase again at the weekend. Or I could throw in a few bits of training as well. So let me know what you'd be interested in seeing. Let me know if you're interested in buying an easy disc wheel. Thoroughly recommend it. We'll see you in the next one. Cheers for watching.